Hello everyone and welcome back to Microsoft Flight Sim. In this video I'm going to take a look at the Mirage F1 freeware released to FlightSim.to by FAF Alex and it was originally an aircraft by Kirk Olsen and Hank Schutemacher and they remain the authors so just be aware of that. It is an adaptation I suppose. Uh, it says it's an aircraft of FSX and then P3D origin. So given that it's actually pretty good because <laughs> most of the conversions I'm very suspicious of, but it seems to be fairly good. There are two versions. There's the reconnaissance version and the tactical uh, assault version. And uh, for the reconnaissance version, we have quite, uh, well, we have seven liveries and they're all very good liveries. Uh, they look very nice. And there's two liveries for the tactical assault version, I think. So we'll just go with the reconnaissance version and I'll just go with the first livery here. And we're going to top it off to see how it takes off uh, with... Uh, I don't know how much should be in these stations, so... And I am not that heavy, but uh, we are going to try for its maximum takeoff weight and see how whether it can get off the ground. It is just a test. So that's maxing it out right there. Everything is very heavy, and we will see what that looks like. I have a flight plot here from uh, Marseille to Nice. Uh, and up through Lyon to Paris and we will see how that goes. Hopefully we will be able to go fast but I have overloaded it so we'll find out. Okay so here we are and this is what it looks like as you can see a very good livery. I think that's very good for freeware. The sound is sort of interesting doesn't really match my throttle right now, but maybe as we get moving it will. The cockpit is really good. Uh, very convincing. I haven't seen a Mirage F1 cockpit, but I can readily believe that this is similar. It's uh, It's got some French over to the side there. The RPM gauge is doing strange things, I've noticed. There are some French gauges, and we'll see how fast it goes. The warning lights I'm not too sure about. I'm not, I don't think anything over on this side is particularly functional. There is a generator switch, but uh, the battery and generators are probably okay. And of course the comms are there. Interesting. Yeah, it really looks good in here. So let's see, throttle out. Well, it sounds fine in here. Okay, now let's just check our weight, because sometimes it changes my settings. Now it looks like we are fully loaded. So we're going to expect a very high takeoff speed. So just a warning here. The HUD doesn't seem to work. That's not too much of a surprise. Okay, and I'm just going to punch it as far as throttle is concerned. It's got four wheels on its main landing gear. Well, that's 200 knots. Okay, we can take off like that. Yeah, well, I took my time on that one, but it wasn't feeling particularly eager to get off the ground. Um, I'd say that really only... I'm just going round and round in circles here as I look at an external app with the numbers. It doesn't really consume as much as I would expect on Afterburner, but it does consume more once the Afterburner turns on. In fact, uh, even though the Afterburner is sort of visibly on, at about 85% throttle, fuel flow-wise, it seems to be lower. So, where it visibly engages the Afterburner and where it engages the afterburner as far as fuel flow is concerned seem to be two different points. We are going very fast. Our indicator speed is 500 now. You can see that there. Now, on this dial, the big speed dial, I don't think we can trust its mock gauge. There's a separate mock gauge over here that seems to 
probably be more realistic. All right, Marseille and Provence. Let's pick up our intended trail here. And instead of going fast at low altitude, we'll climb and try and go fast at a high altitude. Though I want, wanted to sightsee too, so it's a little bit of a rub here. Yeah, that dial which is showing us going at like Mach 2.1 <laughs> there is not right. That It's got the right indicated airspeed, but it doesn't have the right Mach number on that dial. We'll see if the other dial works better. I mean, it's pretty convincing. So in theory, it's capable of Mach 2.2 and has a ferry range of 1,800 nautical miles. Given the current fuel flow, I think that's reasonable, but that's supposed to be with maximum external fuel, and we don't really have that. But Yeah, we don't have the external fuel tank, and I don't know whether the stated fuel that we have here is counting the external fuel tank, even though we don't have it displayed. So, it's complicated. I'm not too sure about that down there. I mean, in theory, I guess it's supposed to be an altimeter. But then, is it trying to sell me 6,000 meters? Because I think we're higher than 6,000 meters. We have the fuel quantity in liters there, and that's handy, and the right number. Well, I'm gonna punch it again. So now we have full afterburner. We have full afterburner and the Mach dial on the indicated airspeed is actually going down, but the indicated airspeed is going up. But we're going up in altitude right now. So technically the Mach number should be going up because if your indicated airspeed is going up and your altitude is going up, you're going into less density, your Mach number will go up. So there's something weird about that one. Okay, I think the I think the altim altimeter is actually in feet, and so it's thirty eight thousand, thirty nine thousand, forty thousand feet instead of in meters. I mean, I think we should be past Mach one right now, actually. But until that other dial really, uh, th yeah, there we go. Now it's picking up. All right, past Mach one point three. I believe that one, the one on the left there, is telling the truth. With full afterburner up here, we still have more than an hour's worth of duration. Which, probably, if uh, if it had its full fuel load. We don't seem to be accelerating much at this altitude with full afterburner. Sticking at around Mach 1.6 right now. We're not climbing very much. But maybe we can flatten out a little bit more here. Then again, we're uh, gonna overshoot. Well, we already overshot Nice. Do we really need to see Nice? Oh, I guess so. Okay, well, time for a dramatic descent. Air brake check. Oh, it has its air brakes. Okay, coming in. All right. Well, nice look at the place. It's not a photogrammetry city or anything, but just landscape is fabulous, of course. But alright. Uh, there's probably some sites around, like uh, some handcrafted landmarks, but we will proceed on to Lyon. There is a weird sort of thing going on up here 
that I don't quite understand. I don't know what that's trying to do there. And it doesn't accelerate great in the climb right now for some reason. I'm going to try and level off. We're at 57,000 feet. But our mock speed has gone down tremendously. Uh, we're already approaching our next sort of sightseeing location, so my ability to get up to Mach 2 is not working out because I keep wanting to go down and take a look at things. So we were space supposed to take a look at something down here. I wish the VFR map still showed what that was. I think we'll pass by this one. Okay, uh, accelerating isn't really getting us much farther than Mach 1.6-ish. Gonna pick up our intended flight path and dive, and we'll test how uh, flying low works. And again, during a dive, we can probably easily get past Mach 2, and we we should not go too far past Mach 2, otherwise we will perish or something. We're at 900 indicated airspeed. I'm activating the air brakes. So, probably inadvisable there. But hey, we're on our flight path again. Yeah, it doesn't feel as stiff as some of the other planes I've flown in flight sim. So that's good. It feels a little bit more like a plane ought to. Our indicated airspeed is six, more than 650, so we're probably past Mach 1 right now. There isn't any sort of Mach effect associated with it, so it's a little bit tough to tell. But we're probably going pretty fast right now. Oh, oh no, I heard sort of a thing just now. Maybe that was the Mach effect. There's sort of a crack there at 680 indicated. Somebody on the page for oh, that's a nice church there. Somebody on the page for it on flightsim.to said that it messed up with the F-16's HUD, that's the SC Designs F-16. I tried it out and the only thing I noticed was that the HUD had G limit on the HUD constantly, regardless of whether we were pulling G's or not. So yeah, I don't know what to make of that. Possibly some interference, but I don't know. I might also need to check out if I need an update to the SC Designs F-16, it's been a while. Yeah, I don't have the full Afrener on right now. I, my throttle's at 75%. Oh, I see a sight there. Very nice. Oh, that tower just popped in. <laughs> Okay, I think it's basically on to Paris after this. There's a turn there. This is a few more sites. We'll see. Well, it's certainly more interesting staying down here than flying high, so I'll just stay down here. Especially since we're not going particularly slowly or anything. Mind you, our trip length is not too long, and we've burned about half of our fuel already by with all these antics going up and down and having full afterburner a lot. Flight time so far about half an hour, so that sort of tracks uh, if you're taking a look at the full afterburner time being a little bit more than an hour. Right now we're not on full afterburner though. Oh, the weather has gone bad over here. Well, bad for sightseeing anyway. Well, hopefully it'll clear up once we get over to Paris. This is what it looks like in here. Some bounciness from the weather. Which is good. Very lively. Well, I don't like it down here right now. <laughs> I think I'm over the terrain pretty decisively, but it's 
not doing me any good to be in the midst of this. Sort of a complex of clouds. Well, there was supposed to be something down there. I want to see a site. <laughs> I want to see what this was. I don't know what it is supposed to be, but I plotted for something there. There must be something worth seeing. I don't know what to call it. Well, it's probably over there. Uh, maybe a chateau of some kind? Or a palace? Well, do another pass. We're going way fast right now. Well, I don't know, uh, it was just a point of interest and I added it to my route but I don't know what to call it. So, here it is. Alright. I guess I'll find out when I go back to the map what it was. Maybe, if the route's still plotted. Okay, let's see what we have here. It's one of those palaces. And again, I wish the points of interest were something that appeared on the VFR map. They used to. I swear when you plotted a point of interest, it would show the name on the VFR map, but now it doesn't. They've got a whole bunch of other improvements, which are welcome. But let's face it, sightseeing in Jet Fighter isn't, unless it's the F-35, isn't exactly the easiest thing. Anyway, on to Paris. Okay, well, this looks like the density of Paris right here, or at least the outskirts. Uh, the clouds are here too. Oh, uh, yeah, that's Notre Dame there. I'm going a little bit fast to really be able to enjoy it. And Eiffel Tower. Really pushing the computer here. I'm still going past 600 knots. The photogrammetry buildings just can't keep up. Our business district here. <laughs> uh, I wonder if you can go through that thing. All depends on whether they decide to model it as a solid thing or whether they were nice about it. I'm not sure. Oh, there's the airport. Uh, we'll have to go around. I'm still carrying most of the load. Yeah, I mean, we've got less fuel, but we really overloaded it to just judge the maximum takeoff weight that they had in the game. I don't even know if that's really the maximum takeoff weight. Let me see. Let's see if I can get a number on that. That's way above the maximum takeoff weight that Wiki has, but it depends on the version. If we take a look here. This has 68,000 pounds, right? And we're currently 58,000 pounds. And I've used most of the fuel. Uh, but, but Wikipedia says that the maximum takeoff weight is 35,000 pounds. <laughs> so, that doesn't seem right. What's the empty weight? Empty weight here is 28,000 pounds. Wiki says that, I mean, Wiki is Wiki, but you know. Um, it says that it's 16,000 pounds. I I get the strange feeling that there's been some, like, they they looked at the number for pounds and assumed it was kilograms and multiplied by two or something. 
So yeah, I don't know about the weights. The gall's right under us. I didn't want to land at the gall this time. Uh, it's really feeling the weight here. As I try to do a maneuver to land that you ought not to do, but... Definitely feeling the weight. And... Touchdown. Uh, it rakes. <laughs> Any brakes? Any brakes? Any brakes? Uh, uh, I'm going this way. Skid. Okay, I'll just park over to the grass here. I may have needed a parachute or something. Okay, well, not the landing I was looking for. Uh, it's the landing that I got. It is the first landing that I've done in this plane, so... I guess we'll have to take that. Um, well, I thought all that, but it's not moving. Let's see... Maybe... Maybe it doesn't like me anymore. Okay, yeah, I'm not sure... But I think... It, it's not moving. <laughs> it is not interested in moving right now. Well, my control surfaces work, but the throttle is not doing anything. So, yeah. Anyway, we landed. It was a one-hour flight, basically, and it's a good plane. Yeah, I like it. For freeware, it's excellent, and I'll leave it there. So with that, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.